Good morning, Calc fans. How are we doing this morning? Uh, beautiful sunny day outside. Hopefully you'll be able to get outside and enjoy some of the nice weather. Hopefully you were able to do that a little bit yesterday. Um, sort of nice to be able to just get outside. I hope everything's going well with your family and your family's feeling well and yourself is feeling well too. Um, hopefully everything's just going well. Once again, if you have any questions and anything with respect to the worksheets or whatever, please do, or the homework, please do contact me or uh, email me any questions that you have. Um, I'm looking to have a quiz next week over this material uh, that we're covering um, on Tuesday, and then we will have a chapter test probably next Friday over the entire chapter four. So you need to continue to maintain and keep up with the material. Uh, University of Finley is asking us to still continue to maintain as best as possible. So this is um, our reality that we have and our normal that we have right now. I hope, once again, I hope things are going well. Um, hopefully you're keeping your social distancing because um, the fact of the day is this was supposed to be opening day for the tribe. Okay, the Indians were supposed to play Detroit today, uh, this afternoon, um, that's been canceled. The more everybody here can do with respect to social distancing so we don't spread this around any further and it starts going back the other direction, uh, the better off everybody will be. Um, I miss not seeing you guys. I miss not having you in class. Uh, hopefully um, you're finding some entertainment. I don't know if you want to call it entertainment and how we do things here. Hopefully you're getting into a routine in regards to uh, being able to maintain your, your education that we have to deal with here. So, once again, bummer, we're not there, but oh well. It's our normal right now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over two problems, two problems from, that I signed for your homework over differential equations yesterday. Um, then I'm also gonna provide you a worksheet, um, and that worksheet will be very similar, or will be uh, antiderivatives, integrals, indefinite integrals um, that you'll be able to do in a couple of differential equations at that point. I will also post solutions um, that you can work to, to um, expect, expect probably a, an in-class assignment tomorrow um, that we'll have to complete over indefinite integrals. And what we've been dealing with, expect that tomorrow, um, along with a, a possibly another review sheet, not a review sheet, but a worksheet uh, that will continue to go over the material that we're covering. Um, Monday, expect a review sheet over uh, Newton's method, indefinite integrals and differential equations on Monday, and then Tuesday we'll have a quiz. Uh, we'll spend Wednesday and Thursday prepping for a chapter test over chapter four, and then Friday going into Christmas or spring break, um, we'll have the chapter four test. So that's the process and the plans that I have for you right now. Uh, please do continue to maintain uh, the work that we have to do. Okay, 31, we have the derivative is equal to one plus three square root of x. We wanna determine what the function is. We're also given an initial condition of f of four is equal to 25. So our function value of four is equal to 25. So we want to be able to calculate a function. We want to deal with a function. Well, we talked about yesterday where we had separation of variables. We could also write this as dy over dx, and we can multiply the dx over to the other side. So dy is equal to one plus three square root of x dx. And to solve, we can take the antiderivative of both sides to be able to solve this. Or you can think about, this is my derivative. How do I undo a derivative? I take the antiderivative. Okay, take the antiderivative. So, we're gonna take the antiderivative of both sides. If I take the antiderivative of a derivative, they will undo each other. Or if I look at my exponent rule once again, just to refer back to what we had, a x the n dx. The exponent rule says this is gonna be x the n plus one, a over n plus one, plus this value of C. That was our exponent rule. And if you haven't got that, we've had that in the last two or three sets of notes that we've dealt with. So we take the antiderivative of dy, we get a value of y. Now we have an issue here because we have square root of x. So I might wanna write that 
as the antiderivative of 1 plus 3 x to the 1 tooth power dx. So I could take my antiderivative. So we have y is equal to 1x. Now remember, when I take the derivative of a constant, it just adds the variable in there. That's a confusing thing because we're so used to taking the derivatives of constants and they go bye-bye. Okay, we take the derivative of an antiderivative of a constant or indefinite integral of a constant, um, I get the constant plus or times x. And once again, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button, I'll stop talking, and hit the go button once we get going again. Okay, we add one. So we have three halves there, so we have plus three divided by three halves, x to the three halves power, plus this value of c. Now we want to do some simplification here before we do deal with a c. We have three divided by three halves, which is three times two thirds. The threes go away, so we get a value of two. And hopefully you're getting used to x of three halves power. This will simplify down to x square root of x. So we're left with y is equal to x plus 2 x square root of x plus c. Now our initial condition once again will allow us to solve for the c. At f at 4 I get a value of 25. So I have an ordered pair that this contains 4, 25. Here's my x, here's my y value. So my y value is 25. This is equal to 4 plus 2 times 4 times square root of 4 plus c. So simplifying, square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 25 is equal to 6, 4 plus 16 plus c. Adding the 4 and 16 together, I get 20. So we have 25 is equal to 20 plus C. I can subtract my 20 over. So C is equal to a value of 5. So when you're done with this, you want to rewrite what your equation is here. So my solution is just not C is 5. My solution is Y is equal to X plus 2 X square root of X plus the value of 5. So that would be my equation at that point. Okay, once again, don't just say c is equal to 5 and leave it go. Okay, solve for c and then sub it in. Let's take a look at the second one here. We can separate our variables again if I wanted to, or to take the antiderivative. Multiplying both sides by dx, we have dy is equal to 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4dx. We're going to take the antiderivative. Okay, what I want you to do now is hit the, I want you to solve this problem on your own and then we'll come back. So I want you to hit your pause button. I'm not going to wait for you. I want you to hit your pause button. Go ahead, take your antiderivative of both sides. Take your antiderivative of both sides. Sub in your value of negative one for x and two for y and solve for your value of c. Okay, go ahead and do that right now. Hit your pause button, go ahead and do that. Turn it back on and then let's check to see if we have the correct solution. So hit your pause button. And I'm going to keep working then. So what we have here is we have y is equal to adding 1, adding 1 to each one of my exponents. My new exponent is going to be x to the fifth, and people like to tend to do that. So we have 5 divided by 5, add 1. So we have x to the third. 
We take our new exponent, divide it into our coefficient. Once again, we have a constant there, so we're going to get a 4x plus c. So simplifying this, we have y is equal to x to the fifth minus x cubed plus 4x plus c. My x value is a value of negative 1. My y value is a value of 2. Watch your negative signs here. So we have 2 is equal to negative 1 to the fifth minus negative 1 cubed plus 4 times negative 1 plus c. So we have, let's see here, this gives me, oh, I don't want that, I don't know what just happened, I hit the wrong button, cancel, I want to close this, oh boy, I'm going to hit pause for a second, if I can't solve, there we go, we're back. <laughs> At the bot, I had a button down here. I'm sorry. So we have two is equal to negative one minus a negative one plus negative four plus c. Okay, watch your negative. There we get we get a little boom chain going there. So we have two is equal to negative one plus one minus four plus c. Uh, let's see here. These cancel out, so I have two is equal to negative 4 plus c, c equals a value of 6, adding 4 to both sides. So my equation then, once again, take it back to your equation then, we have y is equal to x to the fifth minus x cubed plus 4x plus our c value, which is a value of 6. Hopefully you got the same answer I did. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Once again, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me the questions. Um, I will t I'll answer the questions as best as possible. Do please keep up with the material. Um, I will have a worksheet that's posted for you. Uh, work on that this afternoon or today sometime, but also find some time to go outside and enjoy some of the nice weather. Okay, it is a beautiful day out there. Um, if you need to help, if you can help your neighbor out, help your mom and dad out, clean up some stuff around the house, that'd be great. Um, but also find some time to get some work done. Tomorrow I'll have another worksheet for you, an in-class assignment also for you. Um, and then once again, look for a review sheet on Monday and a quiz on Tuesday over this material. Stay safe, keep your social distancing, uh, do your part. I know it's inconvenient at times, but continue to get your old social distancing. Uh, so we can get ourselves back to normal as best as possible. Uh, I miss not seeing you guys on a daily basis, um, but you know that's fine. Uh, the inconvenience that we have right now, hopefully it will pay off in the long run. Uh, if you have questions, once again, please contact me. If not, adios, have a great day.